Let's create a player that we're going to learn how to control very soon. In my world, I'm going to add a 3D object of just a cube for now. And I want to make sure that this is placed in a nice spot in my world. So for you, if yours isn't placed in a nice spot automatically, up on the right hand side under transform, you can click on the three dots on the top right hand side and press reset, which will move it back to the origin at 000. Now we're able to place it wherever we want, although I notice mine is a little bit underground. So one thing I can do is just move up. I know it's one unit in scale each dimension. So if I move it up half a unit, then it's going to be exactly level with the ground here. All right, so what I want to do is just make kind of a pseudo body for this. So I'm going to scale this to be a little bit thinner and actually leave it just like that for now. I'm going to make a pretty simple player in this section here. Of course, later on, you might have the opportunity if you specialize in visual design to work with much more complex models, even animations. But for now, we just want a simple representation of our player. I'm going to rename by clicking on this twice or by right clicking and going rename this to be the player. Actually, let's call this the body. And the next thing I want to add is a sphere for the head. And I noticed that the sphere is in a bad spot. So I'm going to reset mine and move it up above the body here. And I might just resize this to be a little bit smaller. It seemed a tiny bit big for me. Cool. So now I have the sphere for the head. And another thing that I want to do here is figure out how to get some eyes in place. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the sphere move this a little bit further out and shrink this way down to be quite a bit smaller until I have this eye looking shape here. And let's just kind of position it to be looking eye-ish inside the body here, maybe a little bit to the side. That'd be a little bit large. So I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit here. And let's copy it and paste it and then move the copy of it over here. So now we have these little eyes, just kind of a very rudimentary looking player here. And let's create some materials to apply to this player. So I'm going to create a prefab, oh, sorry, a material for the player body. And maybe I'm going to create a material for the player eyes. Let's let the eyes be maybe just like a dark black color. And let's let the body have something that stands out nicely from the world around it. Let's give it maybe a nice kind of purpley blue. You can color things however you prefer to yourself. So these stand out a little bit against the purple. And so now we can kind of see the player is a nice little kind of pseudo model here. Although what if I wanted to actually before I move on, let's rename this to head and this sphere to left eye. The double click work here, please. Left eye and let's click on rename here, right eye. Here is where we need to learn a new subtle skill set. If I wanted to now move this head down because it's a little too floaty above the body, I leave the eyes behind. Well, what can I do about that? Well, I could select them and move them back, but now I'm not entirely sure if they're in the same spot as they were before. So another way I could have done this is just by selecting all three objects at the same time, move them down together, no problem. There's a better way. What I want to do instead of having each of these things be considered separate objects that I have to move independently, I'm going to create an empty object in my world that I'm going to call player. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag the body to be underneath player in a hierarchy. I'm also going to move the head under the player as well. The left and right eyes, I'm going to move underneath the head because they need to be attached to the head. Now check this out. If I move the body as a whole, all the components move together. Sorry, the player as a whole. If I move the body, it moves independently. If I move the head, the eyes move with it because they're a part of the hierarchy of the head more specifically. Let's just control Z this and move it back into place. So I now have the ability to kind of organize content within content in different layers. And now I can collapse this up and this entire player for all intents and purposes is just one thing. But if I wanted to go in and say, hey, head, I want you to be a little further down like so, great. And maybe I still actually wanna change the body separately by making it a bit skinnier, perhaps I can do so. What if I wanted to scale the head? Well, if I scale it, the eyes scale as well because they're a part of the same hierarchy. Let's scale that back up. 
And I'm gonna leave this as the body for now. You can make yours look however you like, but we definitely wanna make sure that we are getting these hierarchies in place so that we can move things appropriately relative to one another when we are moving around and working with assets. Now, something that we wanna do now that we have a little player made here is actually open up our prefabs folder and click and drag this player, the whole player down under here because I might want to be using this in other scenes or different points in time. And it's nice to have this asset kind of pre-built and remembered. Last thing to, that I'll point out for now is that we're, when we're in a lower level of a hierarchy, the position of objects becomes what we call relative rather than global, which means that the position that I set is relative to the parent component. So if I move this eye over here, and go outside to the head. And now I move this head back. Well, of course the eye is gonna move with it. And that eye moved relative to the head in terms of its coordinates. Here's where this can get a little bit strange sometimes, where if I make a cube here and I was to scale this down, ooh, named it, I'll just call this cube for now. And I was to scale this down a little bit and I wanted to maybe pull this, uh, shrink it down a little bit and make kind of a bit of a, a hat for my player here. And I was to have this hat positioned uh, above my player, like so. It's kind of this cool little, whatever, <laughs> you wanna consider this hat? I'm sure you can make more robust art as you get to that point in your creations. And what I want to be able to do is move this around in a separate way than my current hat. Now, as I work with this hat, I want you to keep an eye on the top right hand corner of the position information here. Because right now that it's a separate thing, I see that its coordinates are, well, I'll just put these to zero because it's close enough. And it's just a bit, almost two units. I can put it up a little bit higher so that it's at two units in the Y axis. So the hat's just a bit above its head. And as I move it back, you see that Z axis is going negative. Zero to negative 0.153. But right now, if I move the player, well, this move thing is a little bit off-centered, then the hat doesn't go with it because it's not a part of the hierarchy. Well, keep an eye on those top numbers as I move it to be attached to the head. Those numbers all change. That's because its position is no longer considered being relative to the world itself. It's being considered relative to the thing it's attached to, which is the head. So now if I move the head, you'll see that that hat should move along with it, which it does. and one more thing to see is that now if I reset this to 0, 0, 0, it goes to, well, actually everything reset, including the size. Let's just have this position reset to 0, 0, 0. It doesn't go to the center of the world. It goes to the center of its parent object, the center of the head. So maybe that's a useful thing for us because now if I just move it upwards, it's exactly centered on that sphere. So a little kind of minor detail about the relative positioning of things inside hierarchies that might be useful for you as you play around with some of these things in your work. Get a character made and get something that looks half decent to you. I'm gonna do this hat, I don't really like it, but the character looks good enough to me. And in, well, we'll see you in the next video.